Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to fill our hearts with gratitude for the blessings you've given us in our nation. To move us to pray for our nation and all those in it, for our leaders, and to be good citizens. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. During the Revolutionary War, before the fighting began in, in, in earnest, which took place after the Declaration of Independence was signed on July 4, 1776, there were Christians that fought on both sides and believed that God was on their side. During the Civil War in America, there were Christians who fought on both sides and believed God was on their side. During the world wars in Europe, in different places, there were people had, God's on our side. Everybody said that. Believed they were serving God. Now thoughtful people hear this and they ask, well, how can God be on both sides? Whose side is God really on? It's a question that many have unsuccessfully tried to answer throughout history. And that's why we're going to consider our text today with the statement, be on God's side. Give to your government what you owe. You know, often when people learn about their elected leaders, um, but they're also known as rulers, uh, what they've done, what kind of things they support, sinful things they support, they think, well, since they're sinful rulers and they support evil, then then we can disobey them. We can riot. We can hurt others. We can uh, steal from others. We don't need to pay our taxes. And then they do just that. And when they do it, they ignore the Lord who inspired the Apostle Paul to write, everyone must submit himself to the governing authority. Notice there's no conditional clause in that command. The command does not say, well, everyone must obey uh, the government authorities if they're Christians or if they're good, or they only do good things. It says everyone must obey them. It's not there because when God inspired Paul to write this, the governing authorities, the Romans, were wicked paganists. They didn't know the true God. They were immoral, they were bloodthirsty, and they demanded obedience. You know, the only citizens that had rights were Roman citizens. The rest of the people they ruled over had no rights. If arrested, they couldn't demand a, a trial and say, I have rights, and see a lawyer. The Romans could just imprison, beat, and put to death those they believed who had broken the law or those who were getting in their way. And sometimes they do these things to an individual just to keep the peace. That's what Pilate, the Roman ruler, did when the Jews brought Jesus to him and set forth their charges, and he examined Jesus, and he found that there was no reason for Jesus to be put to death. So Pilate, to keep the peace, he had his soldiers insult Jesus, spit on Jesus, and he had them whip Jesus. And when that wasn't enough to keep the peace, and the root Jews kept saying, great way with him, crucify him. Pilate said, okay, we'll crucify him. And he washed his hands. He said, I'm innocent of this man's blood, and he had him put to death on the cross. Now our text continues. For there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. To establish an authority means to set for someone up as a, a ruler. And God uses his authority to direct earthly events, to set up the chosen rulers he wants at a specific time. Power really determines who rules. Consider the Revolutionary War. King George, the ruler of England, was, and England was a world power of the day. He didn't simply accept the Declaration of Independence and say, well, I guess the colonists don't want to be under my rule anymore, so we'll just let them go. No. He said, we're going to send a powerful army, and we're going to put down this rebellion. We're going to force them to submit to, to our rule. We'll force them to be dependent on England. And you know, there were many Christians in England, and there were Christians in America who agreed with his actions. The colonists, 
most of them were Christians. Many of them didn't want to submit to the king anymore, and it was all about taxes. So they set their own, their own government. They raised their own army, and they used power against the English. And it must have been God's will that they win, because they did. It looked like a hopeless cause. King George, the nobles, the parliament, many citizens of England, they didn't want to submit to this Declaration of Independence. The colonists didn't want to submit to the English rule. And that people do this, that's not new. Every human being is born with this desire for power, to have other people do what they say. We don't want to submit to others, to obey others. We want others to submit to us. And that's why, and you know, we want what we want whenever we want it. That's what we're born with. And that's why to many of us it sounds really great when someone says, you know what, everyone should be allowed and free to do what he or she pleases, whatever they want. However, if we would look at this in practical matters, there would be a lot of trouble if everybody just did what they want. Just imagine a parking lot without any lines in it. You know, the lines are there, they order you. They say, this is the way you should park. And uh, if they weren't there, people would just park any old way. Of course, some people do today anyway. And parking lots are one of the most dangerous places to drive. You really gotta be on your guard. If people aren't, aren't, aren't looking for other cars, they're looking to go shopping. Or imagine there were no speed limits on the highway. There were no lines to tell you which side to be on. There were no signs to give you a limit on how fast you could go. And then, and then imagine that there were no police officers with the authority to enforce those orders. Everybody would be free to drive the way they wanted. More than more people than already would do that. There's a lot who still do that today. Be a chaos out there, a lot of death. You know, what we need authority for is to promote order, to keep evil in check. You know, without somebody in charge, somebody setting up the rules, enforcing the rules, humanity would do very little good. Imagine if there were no rulers to punish those who steal and murder. You know, one person could work hard, plant a crop, and build a house, raise some animals for food, and another could say, oh, I want that, and go and kill that person who did that, and take the crop, the house, the animals. Would, now ask yourself, would you want to live in a nation or a world like that? Of course not. Consequently, he who rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves, for rulers hold no terror for those who do right, for those who obey God's commandments. The Roman government was partial to the orderly, peaceful, and obedient citizen person, because its number one goal was to collect taxes and money to make Rome a great place to live. Order and produce and peace and obedient order, orderly, peaceful, and obedient people, they produce wealth that can be taxed and bring wealth to them. Rebels and war, on the other hand, cost money. So do you want to be free from the one in authority? And do what is right, and he will commend you. He will speak well of you, for he's God's servant to do you good. You know, Rulers serve individuals as well when they keep order. Then the individual can farm, then the individual can build, then the individual can create things to earn money. Matter of fact, you know, as Jesus pointed out, money is something the government makes. Money allows people to, to, who are ruled to eat, to drink, to live, to have a good time. They don't hold any care for those. Rulers, however, do hold terrors for those individuals who do wrong. And so God tells Christians, if you do wrong, be afraid, for he doesn't bear the sword for nothing. 
He's God's agent. He's working for God, an agent of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Can you imagine again that you're drunk, that you don't have a driver's license, that you're driving a stolen car, and you're speeding down the highway at 20 miles an hour over the limit, and then you see a police car with a radar gun pointed at you. How would you feel? You'd be terrified. You'd be afraid. Why? Because you're doing wrong. And you know that if, you, if they capture you, they're going to put handcuffs on you, they're going to throw you in jail, and that scares you. At least it should. Fear of what the government can do to them is the reason most give the government what they owe it. Christians, however, have another reason for giving the government what they owe it. And that reason is told in our text. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also because of conscience. Conscience, that little voice within us that tells us this is right and this is wrong. It makes us feel guilt. Now, on its own, conscience can be right and it can be wrong. It can give us wrong advice. It can tell us what is right is wrong and what is wrong is right. So the conscience of the Christian is different. It bases what is right and wrong on God's word. So when Paul says submit because of conscience, he means submit because that's what God commands. He doesn't say submit because the Supreme Court or some rulers have voted and declared that something sinful is now legally right. Now this is also why you pay tax. For the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. Give everyone what you owe him. If you pay, owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. Give to your rulers. God commands it. We know God commands it because our Lord and Savior told us that we should do this. You know, we heard in our gospel reading, Jesus' enemies are there They're trying to trap him, and they said, is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or to the government or not? You see, people in Jesus' day hated paying taxes, just like the people today hate to pay taxes. Those of you maybe that haven't, you know, are younger, don't know what it's like, you work and work, and then all of a sudden you've got to give some of it to government. Or you go buy something, and the cost is $19.99 or $20, and they add 5%. I like paying taxes. They were especially, the people of Jesus, they especially hated the Romans because they were foreigners. Imagine how you would feel if um, ISIS took over Wisconsin and they forced you to pay taxes. You'd hate it. And that's how the Jews felt about the Romans. So Jesus, if Jesus simply said, oh, pay taxes, the people would have hated him and would have gone against him. On the other hand, if Jesus had told the people not to pay taxes, then the Roman government would have be after Jesus. As every government, including ours, does to those who, who don't pay taxes or who even advocate the non-payment of taxes. But nevertheless, Jesus was so wise, he escaped the trap. And he said, show me the coin for paying taxes. And he brought him a denarius. And he asked him, whose portrait is this? And whose inscription? Who made this money? And they Caesar, they said. And so he said, give to Caesar what's Caesar's, and to God what's God. Basically, Jesus said, God wanted people to pay taxes to the government. And Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who came to earth to keep the commandments for us, to suffer and die for us, he didn't rebel. When they were treating him unjustly, he said nothing. He took it. Then when he died on the cross, he prayed for the Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. He died to pay for our sins, and then God raised him from the dead and set him at the right hand where he rules all things, exalted as our Lord, our supreme ruler. So we know his will is God's will. It's our will. And so if Jesus um, says, give to the government what you owe it, we do. We do it to honor our God and our Savior. We do it because God honored us. 
by giving us faith in Jesus, making us members of his family. We do it because God commands us to do it. We do it because Jesus demonstrates God's love for us by dying on the cross. We do it because we know God doesn't ask us to do anything that will hurt us. We do it because we want to be on God's side. We do it because we love God. And if the day comes when our government commands us to do what is sinful, what goes against God's word, commands us to stop proclaiming the whole truth of God's word, we pray that God give us the strength, the power to imitate the apostles, to do as Paul did when he was unjustly arrested. He demanded a trial to use the courts to do as Peter and John did when the Jewish leaders commanded them to stop preaching the gospel. They, first they replied, we must obey God rather than human beings. And then they spoke the truth of God's law and gospel to those people. And, when they, and after they submitted, they were unjustly punished. They rejoiced because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name of Jesus, their Savior. So may we. Amen.